And I think, I personally think that it's the most important challenge we have been facing uh, during all these years, mm -hmm. much more serious than, for instance, the, the financial crisis. And why? Because it will be much more difficult to find a stable solution. Um, on one side, we certainly have to welcome many of those uh, people who, have, who are trying to, to reach Europe. Uh, it's a moral issue, it's a humanitarian okay. issue. The refugees, we, we have to make space for them in our societies. At the same time, we also know that in some of our countries there are a strong resistance to that because um, people are simply not used to deal with this kind of problem in some of our countries. And also we have, let's be honest about that, we have uh, uh, extremist forces, sometimes um, xenophobic forces that will use this as uh, something that for them to instigate opposition, not only to the refugees, to the migrants, but also to, to Europe, to the European Union as a concept, even if this problem is not specific to the European Union. Uh, <laughs> we will have the refugees with or without European Union, with or without Schengen rules. Sure. But many people try to make that equation. It's because of the free movement in Europe that we have the problem. Uh, that's not the case. I was, when I was president of the commission, I was in some refugee camps, for instance, in the north of uh, Jordan, in Zatari camp. I interviewed many of those Syrian people, uh, people middle class uh, that have seen their homes destroyed and they simply escaped because they want to give a minimum of conditions to their families. And I say myself, and I said it already publicly, if I was a Syrian, with three sons as I, I have. Of course I'll do anything I could to reach Europe or to reach a place where I think I could live at least in peace, awesome. if possible, with mm. some level of prosperity. So this is a major challenge, and I believe we need to act on different uh, phases. We need proper sequencing. Now, the more urgent thing is these uh, refugees, uh, and I think basically the European institutions are doing the right job. Uh, are doing the right thing, is to, to try to have some burden sharing because uh, those refugees cannot stay uh, in the countries where they arrive because simply uh, there is no capacity from, from Greece or even Italy, which is much bigger and much richer, uh, but it's not possible to, to have all these refugees there. So some kind of burden sharing is necessary. But then we have also to think in a medium to longer term perspective. In the medium term, we need to have plans and that requires some proper financing for training of these people, including in our languages, so that we avoid new ghettos. They become marginalized. And also teaching them some kind of, of profession in case they have not, some uh, professional training. For instance, the, the Germans are already doing that, are planning that, mm -hmm. and they have a very good system of apprenticeship. Like, uh, Austria has also a very good system of apprenticeship. So why not to have some programs now specifically devoted to these um, refugees or even migrants? And then, of course, the comprehensive solution can come only if there is peace and stability in the, those regions affected by the conflict, from uh, Syria to, to Libya, Iraq. And that is a major effort that requires the commitment of the parties themselves in the conflict, but also the regional players and the so-called international community, including, by the way, the United States of America. Uh, the reality is that the situation in, the, in that region is very bad, is tragic, and uh, uh, I don't believe it's going to get better in the near future. Most likely it is going to get worse before it can get better.